In this video, we are going to talk about the first type of modulation techniques, which is amplitude modulation, and this is what we are going to study in chapter 4. Amplitude modulation uh, uh, it has many uh, types, it has several types that we are going to study, all of them under the name of amplitude modulation. So, the first type that we are going to start with is called double side band suppressed carrier, and we'll explain the name later. The second type we are going to study, and this might be a little bit confusing, because the second type is also called amplitude modulation, although it is like a subcategory of the big amplitude modulation technique, but also it is called amplitude modulation. But in order to differentiate between these two things, the big category and the subcategory here, this time we are going to call it AM. So always AM means amplitude modulation, which is the subcategory of the big amplitude modulation. And then we are going to study single side band modulation. We are going to study something called vestigial side band modulation. We are going to study something quadrat called quadrature amplitude modulation. So all these types, all of them are subcategories of the amplitude modulation technique. We are going to study uh, the difference between uh, uh, each one and the other uh, and the others and uh, we'll go over the details of all of them. Let's start with the first category, category which is double side band. Suppressed carrier. And again, as I said, the name will be clear later uh, when we finish the, uh, studying the, this type. It will be clear why we call it double side band suppressed carrier. Okay, so double side band suppressed carrier basically you multiply your signal times the carrier which is cosine omega ct. So we bring it like a high frequency carrier with its sinusoidal carrier. This sinusoidal carrier, it doesn't matter if it has a phase or not, here it doesn't matter because we don't care about the phase, we care only about the amplitude and the amplitude modulation. So for simplicity and without loss of generality, we'll assume that the carrier has a phase of zero, just for simplicity for else. But it doesn't matter. Keep in mind that it doesn't matter if the carrier has a phase or not. So we multiply our signal. Our signal, this is the information, what we call the information signal. It has another name. Sometimes we call it baseband signal. Sometimes we call it the message. And sometimes we call it the modulating signal, modulating. So all these names are for M of T, information signal, message, modulating signal. Why modulating signal? Because it is the signal that modulates the carrier, right? It's a modulating signal. Or baseband signal because it exists in that baseband. While the cosine here, it's called the carrier. After we multiply these two signals, we get what? We get a signal, let's call it y of t, it's m of t cosine omega ct, and then this is the signal that we are going to transmit over the antenna. This structure here is called the modulator or the transmitter. So the whole structure is called the modulator or the transmitter. So basically, this is the signal that we are going to transmit. It's m of t cosine omega ct. Let's try to uh, imagine what's going on here in the time domain and in the frequency domain. In the time domain, when we multiply our signal m of t times cosine, basically, we will get a carrier, we will get a cosine wave. Its amplitude is changing according to m of t, right? So if we have m of t that looks like this, let's say this is our signal m of t with time, then in the time domain the transmitted signal will be a cosine wave with high frequency where its amplitude is changing similar to m of t. So let's try to plot the amplitude first which we call the cover or the we call it the envelope of our signal. So the amplitude of the signal of y of t it will change similar to m of t and then there will be a cosine wave changing with this amplitude a cosine wave 
changing the density too. But we know that the cosine is symmetric, up and down, right? So if the amplitude of the cosine from the positive side is 5, then the amplitude from the negative side, side, side will be negative 5. 4, it will be negative 4, right? So it's symmetric in the amplitude. So we can plot the negative or the reflected cover of our cosine wave. We can reflect this signal so that we get the negative cover of our cosine wave. Now our cosine wave, our cosine wave, it has this amplitude from the positive side and from the negative side. Now we can plot our uh, signal as a sinusoidal wave with high frequency that changes with this amplitude. Starting from here, the amplitude or the, uh, the, the factor multiplied by the cosine starting from here will be negative, which means that the cosine is going to reverse phase. So it was going up here, then it will reverse phase to go down. And so on, again, reverse phase, again, and so on. So our signal will look like this. It's a cosine wave, which as I plotted in red. Its amplitude is changing depending on m of t. So this is the amplitude of the cosine wave changing. The positive the positive envelope or the positive cover of the cosine wave, we call it uh, we call it the envelope of the signal. So this positive cover, the positive side, even if our signal has negative parts, the positive part of the uh, cover of the cosine wave is called the envelope of uh, our signal. So this is how our transmitted signal looks like in the time domain. You plot our m of t to plot your message as an envelope or as, as a cover and then you reflect it to plot the opposite envelope then you plot the carrier in between these two envelopes the, the, the original one and the reflected one you get the time domain signal so now we can imagine our signal in that time domain what about the frequency domain? the frequency domain the frequency domain will be as follows Let's assume that our message, our baseband signal m of t, it has frequency domain m of omega that looks like this and goes from negative 2 pi b to 2 pi b radian per second. It has maximum value of a. This is m of omega. Let's assume that this is m of omega. Then, when you multiply m of t times cosine, what happens to the frequency domain? Take Fourier transform. Take Fourier transform of 5 t, you will get 5 omega. 5 omega, without doing any calculations, without, without doing any equation, we know that if you multiply any signal times cosine, you shift the spectrum of the signal to the right, to the left, and you divide over 2. You shift the spectrum your signal to the right around omega c and to the left around negative omega c and you divide over 2 then the amplitude here will be or the maximum value will be a over 2 this is something that I told you before you should memorize, you should keep it in your mind when you multiply any signal times cosine you shift right, you shift left in the frequency domain. You shift right, you shift left, and you divide over 2. Of course, this point will be what? This point will be omega c plus 2 pi b. This point will be omega c minus 2 pi b. This point will be negative omega c plus 2 pi, 2 pi b. And this is negative omega c minus 2 pi b. Right? And you can do it by Fourier transform in, 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 in the frequency domain phi of omega will be half m of omega minus omega c plus m of omega plus omega c. This is the equation, right? So now we saw how the double side band suppressed carrier signal appears at time domain the frequency domain. The part above the carrier here, this part above the carrier, 
one we call upper side bend. Upper side bend. And similarly, the part here, this the image of this part at the other side, at the native side, also is called upper side bend. While the part lower than omega c, the part lower than omega c in the positive side is called lower lower side bend, and this part, which is its image, is also called lower side bend. So we have two sides here. We have two sides. We have upper side bend. Lower side bend. If our signal is real, if our signal m of t is real, which is the case in in, in practice, okay, then these two sides will be symmetric. As we said, if the signal is real, the spectrum is even, the magnitude spectrum is even. So these two sides are symmetric. Here in our modulation technique, double side bend suppressed carrier, we transmit both sides. We transmit both the upper side bend and the lower side bend. That's why we call it double side bend. So the, the first part of the name now is explained. Why we call it double side bend? Because we are transmitting the two sides of the bend, the upper side and the lower side. Later, we will study some other techniques like the single side bend, where we will transmit only one of them. That's why we call the other one single side bend. Here we call it double side bend. Why we call it suppressed carrier? We call it suppressed carrier because here we transmit m of t cosine omega c t. We don't have a separate component for the carrier. We don't have a term called cosine omega c t alone. Later, we are going to study another technique where there will be one more term here. There will be one more term called uh, cosine omega c t. So we have a carrier component here. We have a carrier component here in the transmitted signal. Just a carrier, pure carrier. That's why here we call it suppressed carrier because we don't have this component. We don't have a component for the carrier alone. Okay, that's why we call it suppressed carrier. Suppressed means uh, it's killed. This component is killed. It's not there. Okay, suppressed carrier. So because we don't have a component for the carrier alone. So this is how our transmitter looks like in the double side band suppressed carrier. Uh, this is the signal in the time domain. This is how the signal looks like in the, uh, uh, in the frequency domain. Okay? In the next video, we'll discuss the demodulator for the receiver and how it works.